Hey everyone, here we are with our practice quest key. I'm just going to talk you through it. Hopefully this will help explain a little bit about how to do it. In this uh, first one, what are all the values of x for which this series converges? Uh, if you scan the solutions, you'll see it's an interval notation, plus just the way it's set up in our convergence series. These are all tip-offs that we're going to use the ratio test. Remember how to do that. You always do the n plus 1 divided by the original form. Uh, when you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal, as I've done here. You set it up so that the absolute value and the limit as n goes to infinity is less than 1. When you do the n plus 1 magic, you'll see you have one more x minus 2 in the numerator, just like you have one more 3 in the denominator because of the plus 1 there. And then I've got this fraction that comes out of n over n plus 1. As n goes to infinity, that just goes to 1 and disappears. So I wind up with this absolute value inequality. I pull the negative 1 over and sandwich this in between, and then I go about solving, which means getting rid of the 3 is multiplying both ends by 3, and then adding 2. Multiply by 3 and add 2, I get negative 1. x to 5, so it could be any one of these three, unless um, and until I find what the endpoints are telling me. When I plug in negative 1 minus 2 more is negative 3, basically negative 3 over 3 is like I've got a negative 1 pulled out and that's alternating and then um, the, um, I'm sorry I'm plugging it into the original, you really you, you go into the original, sorry I was just pointing at the wrong thing. When I plug in a negative 1 that's going with that n power to alternate. So this is just um, the 3 over 3 disappears to the 1, and it's a 1 over n. So um, it just becomes this right here, and that's an alternating harmonic series, so that does converge. So I can fill in that equality sign right there. It's not true when I plug in 5. When I plug in 5 and then take away 2, I'm at 3, and 3 over 3 is a positive 1, and the the harmonic series for uh, when it's positive does not converge, it diverges, so I do not want the equality sign there. Okay, so it's E. This one, if you look at what's happening, I'm multiplying the top and bottom by a common ratio of 3 eighths. That's less than 1, so this does converge. I want to focus on my first term and put that on the top, and then 1 minus that common ratio. I just do the fraction math, go carefully, it's 2.4. Which of these three series converges? n is going to infinity. n over n plus 2 is going to converge to 1. If I add up 1 an infinite number of times, that is definitely divergent. Here, n is 1, and cosine of pi is negative 1. When n is 2, cosine of 2 pi is 1. And then it's going to bounce around to 3 pi, so it's just a cleverly disguised alternating harmonic series with that n in the denominator alternating harmonic series do converge. Bound to be something like that on the exam. Here again we have alternate, we have a harmonic series but it is not alternating so they're driving home that point. That is divergent. Which of the following series converge? Only two. Four says what is the coefficient of the x squared in the Taylor series? Well that's going to be the second step, the second degree Taylor polynomial approximation. So my original function is the zero step, then the first, then the second. So I have to go the second derivative. So using the chain rule, going carefully there, gives me this expression. And the coefficient is the six. Goes into the Taylor polynomial form. It's actually Maclaurin because it's centered at zero. And don't forget, you've got n factorial down below. Six over two factorial is 3. So the coefficient for the x to the n term, the x squared term, is 3. Number 5, what is the approximation of the value of the sine of 1 obtained using a fifth degree Taylor polynomial? Okay, so memorize that thing and fifth degree is only going up till x to the fifth, so that's a little bit extra right there. Um, when you plug it in, you've got um, 0 and the sine of 0 that drops out. You've got this term and then the following term. This is just showing you how to sort of get that expression. When we plug in the sine of 1 and we fill in all the bits, 
we've got 1 minus 1 sixth plus 1 twentieth, and that's good enough to see that it is e, part e. So do memorize those most common um, Taylor polynomials. Here, number 6. So this one is maybe the most difficult of the bunch. A function has this Maclaurin series expansion. And as you look at this, if you have those memorized and you know that e to the x is just the most simple version where it's sort of x squared over 2 factorial and x to the third over 3 factorial, if you remember that bit and then work forward, it'll be x to the 1 over 1 factorial and then x to the 0 is 1 over 0 factorial, you'll get that with little work at all. Then, noticing up above that I have 2 here, if it was x squared, that would be simple, and 3 with 3, it's increased in the numerator by an x squared. So that's why I say down here it's like we took e to the x and multiplied every term by x squared, but then have taken away the first two terms. If you see here in these brackets, if I multiply those by x squared, I get x squared plus x cubed, and they're missing, so there they are. If we take and multiply it and take it away, I've got that answer there. So I'm not sure if there's an easier way to figure that one out, but that's the way I thought made the most sense. Which of the following series diverges? Well, the sine of 2 is never going to be more than 1, and 1 over 3 is definitely less than 1, and so that's a geometric series that's converging, definitely. This one, p test, that is n to the 1 third, and 1 third is not greater than 1, so that diverges. This one is going closer and closer and closer to 1. So um, as n goes to infinity, these are both getting larger, and that's insignificant, so it's becoming 1. And so adding up 1 lots of time also diverges. The divergent ones are 2 and 3. Sometimes the focus so much is on convergence that it's easy to misread that. And they fortunately did not give us an answer of 1 only. So it kind of steers you away from that, but just be careful on the exam. Um, I have got an issue with this window in my, um, that's funny, in the screen capture, I can't go below. So number eight is um, just going to be one where you want to figure out by plugging in n equals one that the first term is four thirds and the second term is eight ninths and the third term is 16 27 and so the multiplier is 2 thirds, so that's a geometric series with the first term being 4 thirds and r being 2 thirds, and you do the math and you get the answer to be 4. And then finally, number 9, which of the following series converges for all real numbers x? And the only one that is close is d. You can rule out all the other ones if you know that hierarchy of values. Um, I think it's pretty clear that all the other ones uh, can be eliminated. All right, sorry about that snafu with 8 and 9 at the end. My screen capture software will not scan to the bottom of that document. Thank you.